Human curiosity is boundless. It is no wonder that we gravitate towards the stars. Space travel is the defining scientific achievement of the past century. The 2020s mark a revival of investment into space missions and technology, alongside a growing demand for sustainable practices amidst the ever-worsening climate crisis. Our team's interest was piqued by the idea of a space elevator in the context of modern-day society. We approached this thought experiment pragmatically by identifying the problems that a space elevator could solve, improve, inflame, or create. We are Elliot Heath, Celine Mordenez, Frank Zhang, and Laura Topolsky of Columbia University's space policy team, mentored by Anastasia Shmolova, Isabel Tenney, and Adam Dawood. We call our proposal for the International Space Elevator Consortium and National Space Society's 2024 academic challenge, the Green Orbit Initiative. Our Green Orbit Initiative aims to be an energy efficient approach to space elevators, highlighting their untapped potential while placing their existence firmly within the constraints of reality. We relied on ISEC's extensive research on space elevators along with existing scientific literature, data, and studies to inform our understanding of space missions and specify other details related to the challenge. We believe the Green Orbit Initiative is a sustainable key to unlocking the mysteries of our final frontier. Rockets have always struggled to accelerate, manage their payload, and ration their fuel within Earth's gravitational pull. All of these challenges stem from an energy cost known as delta-v, which measures the necessary change in the spacecraft's velocity to change orbit. The graph here shows the delta-v cost needed to go from Earth to low Earth orbit and geostationary orbit. This results in two major problems. The first is that each project becomes exceedingly expensive. Because reusable rockets are still under development, there is an additional cost of anywhere from tens to hundreds of millions of dollars to rebuild an entire rocket. The nine engines used in the Falcon 9 rocket typically use 902,793 pounds of fuel, estimated to cost $57 million. Other rockets, like the one used in the 2010 EELV program, cost an average of $380 million per launch. Rocket fuel itself raises environmental concerns as a contributor to the ongoing climate crisis. Hybrid engines emit black carbon, which gets injected into the upper layers of the atmosphere, where it can remain almost permanently. RP-1, another type of jet fuel, releases both black carbon and carbon dioxide. Methane, another fuel type, is itself an extremely potent greenhouse gas. Beyond the specific chemicals that they emit, each rocket sent to space is also a more effective polluter than a car or an airplane because rockets release pollutants all the way from the surface of the Earth to the mesosphere, and pollution released into the upper layers of the atmosphere tends to remain there for prolonged periods of time. As space travel commercializes, rocket fuel pollutants are no longer negligible in their environmental impact. Space elevators present a unique opportunity to minimize both rocket building costs and the negative externality of pollution. Of all the possibilities that space elevators present, the most alluring is the access they provide to interplanetary travel. Neglecting losses to aerodynamic forces, the optimal energy requirement to send a payload to orbit is equal to the sum of the potential and kinetic energy at that orbit. However, because the tangential velocity at any point on the elevator increases with height, the act of climbing the elevator imparts kinetic energy onto the payload, stealing it from the vast Ke reserve of Earth's rotational energy. Pure energy savings amount to around 8%, but this conceals the far larger savings in having all of that energy dedicated to launching the payload, rather than the payload, launcher, and fuel, the latter two making up the vast majority of mass on chemical rockets. Since the angular velocity of the tower is constant, equal to that of Earth's rotation, at any height beyond geostationary orbit, the tower's top will be traveling faster than the orbital velocity at the same height. The higher a payload is released from, the higher the orbit that the payload will be boosted to. At a height of 53,200 kilometers, releasing a payload causes it to escape Earth's sphere of influence and travel into interplanetary space. At 144,000 kilometers, a released spacecraft can reach Jupiter, slingshotting off its massive gravity well to reach just about anywhere in the solar system. Thus, the simple act of climbing the elevator, which can be achieved through renewable electric power, unlocks a gateway to the solar system. The elevator's zenith could become a hub for interplanetary transports, departing to destinations from Mercury to Titan, 
Gone would be the days of gargantuan launch vehicles and complex in-orbit refueling missions, replaced by a door to the corners of the solar system that one need only step off of. While serving as a hub for interplanetary transports, the elevator Zenith could also provide a checkpoint station from which a variety of in-orbit operations could be conducted, including space debris removal, asteroid mining, and solar farm building. Space elevators provide a solution to the threat posed by space debris, an increasingly disruptive factor in space operations. Space debris endangers satellites in orbit by colliding into them and moving them away from their specific location. If two pieces of space debris collide, there is a chance that they will fracture into smaller fragments, thereby increasing the amount of debris in orbit. This creates a dangerous chain reaction known as the Kessler effect. If the Earth's exosphere becomes too polluted with debris, neither existing nor developing shielding technology will be able to protect the space technology orbiting Earth. Thus, it is crucial that we declutter the exosphere so that we can continue to understand, study, research, and protect our Earth from above. Space elevators allow easy access to pieces of debris floating in Earth's orbit without creating harmful environmental costs. As a part of our Green Orbit Initiative, space elevators contain a base station and a laboratory setup. Retrieval drones can be released from the base station and programmed or directed to collect target debris. Removed debris then can be studied and mined for resources. In addition to debris, the Green Orbit apparatus would provide access to satellites already orbiting Earth. This would make maintenance repairs and the recycling of old satellites easy and environmentally friendly, removing the risk of old satellites colliding with any debris and creating more damage. Asteroid mining allows for the extraction of resources worth, in some cases, as with the asteroid 16 Psyche, as much as $700 quintillion of magnitude 10 to the 18th power. The top 10 most cost-effective asteroids with close proximity to Earth can yield resources worth up to $15 trillion. At present, the costs of asteroid mining are very high due to the high delta-v constraints of deploying a spacecraft to asteroids. But because green orbit lowers delta-v costs, and contains a base station out of which asteroid mining operations could be conducted, the asteroid mining business could become a plausible pursuit under the Green Orbit Initiative. The Green Orbit Initiative promises transformative benefits for space access, but its production faces a multitude of engineering, logistical, and political barriers. Developing materials resilient enough to endure the harsh conditions of space ranging from radiation and temperature fluctuations to mechanical stressors, is the initial obstacle to the elevator's success. Moreover, the space elevator's passage through Earth's radiation belt, a journey of approximately three and a half days within a highly irradiated zone, endangers human passengers. Another structural challenge presents itself in the form of the Coriolis effect, which could cause the elevator to sway significantly as it ascends. This particular factor complicates the mission further and might require a slower ascent, potentially extending travel time for up to 15 days. This mission also faces financial barriers, including securing investments for a project with uncertain long-term returns. The mission may require international cooperation within our currently volatile geopolitical landscape. The comprehensive nature of these challenges requires politicians and policymakers around the world to realize the vision of a space elevator and advocate for its approval and construction. In spite of some barriers to its development, the Green Orbit Initiative represents a new entry in the space race renaissance. We believe that a space elevator prioritizing sustainability will be a key factor in space exploration's long-term success, allowing humanity to continue to probe the depths of space and to finally reach beyond the stars.